everyone. My name is Dor. This is Igor. Uh, I'm very excited to be here. Thank you everyone for uh, coming. Um, I'm going to, uh, to present uh, the first uh, part of uh, this talk. Igor is going uh, to present the second one. Uh, so a little bit background first. So we uh, work at uh, Cadence. And at Cadence, we develop software, uh, software tools. Specific in my site uh, on Haifa, we uh, developed the best in class formal verification uh, tool, which called uh, Jasper. And performance to this tool is really, really important. Uh, each line of code uh, can invoke millions of uh, times. And we always reducing the runtime as much as we can. Uh, and that's why performance is, uh, thank you. That's why performance is so important to us. So I want to start with a benchmark we did. We basically compared the performance of three data structures in uh, C++. The first one is the vector, the second list, and the deck. Um, so the goals of uh, my talk is, first of all, data structure selection, which is um, which data structure to use in terms of performance and when to use it, under which uh, cases it's better to use uh, one data structure than the other in terms of performance. The second one is under the wood STL containers implementation. We are going to analyze uh, the, um, uh, the data structure of uh, some STL containers and to see how it affects on performance. Also, we are going to discuss the theoretical approach versus the realistic result. We are going to see some cases where the um, theoretical approach and the realistic result are different. So we are going to discuss why does it happen. And OK, that's, let's dive in. So th th those are the STL containers we are going to talk. This is the operation we, we choose. There is the, the pushback, random in certain elements. So it's first uh, uh, look for a random element, then insert in this position, random remove, fill front, and sorting. So this is uh, the complexity table. We are going to see uh, this table also in the next slides. We can see the, um, the time complexity for each one of the operation. For example, in a vector list and deck, sorting is uh, being done in big O notation of n log n in all uh, data structures. Uh, so we are going to see uh, this table uh, a lot of time in the, f in the next uh, slides. And you can see the vector pushback. It's the amortized time, um, O of constant, big O of constant. OK, a little bit of benchmark notes first. So all benchmark were run on dedicated machine. Each experiment was launched seven times. The average time was taken. The results may differ from uh, one operating system to another operating system. But what is more important is the overall trend. Uh, this is the version we used. And ah, it's important to mention, there is no one size fits all solution for writing code that runs faster. The only way to truly know is to measure. So let's dive in to the first uh, benchmark we did. So the x-axis is the number of elements. Uh, the y-axis is the accumulated time in microseconds. And uh, the yellow line is the list. Uh, we, the green one is the vector. We also use a vector and we uh, did reserve before launching the uh, benchmark. So you can see uh, this uh, measurement in the blue line. And there is the deck. The type we use is 8-bit, which is one byte. 
and so like for example we ah we it's important to mention we start with 1000 elements and then uh, add uh, elements and measure the time so for example we start with 1000 elements then add 36000 element and measure the accumulated time it took so we can see clearly that from the results the least performance are the worst um, so we are going to discuss uh, next slide why is that and the difference between the vector and the deck are minor why also we are going to discuss it on the next slice slides sorry so the reason the lift is so slow is because the spatial locality advantage the vector has. So the vector uh, stores his, his element in contiguous uh, area of the memory. So it stores element in one after the other. So let's look at an example over here. Let's assume we have a vector and we are trying to access the first element of the vector. So not only the access data is fetched, but the whole cache line is fetched as well. So we got a cache miss, and now you c we can see that the, o the, the next elements are already in inside the cache line. So uh, it reduced the number of cache miss for when we are iterating on the next elements. Question? Mm -hmm. uh, wouldn't that be more relevant for access? In this case, if you're pushing, I expect that uh, allocating new elements in the list is the bottleneck and not access? Uh, yeah, but once you access uh, the element, like the, the area of this uh, already cached to memory, so that's uh, what lead to um, better performance in this case. And not the fact that you have to allocate an, an additional node in the list. We're going to talk about uh, allocate uh, more memory in a vector, how it has uh, been done. Uh, OK. Um, another uh, advantage the vector has is efficiently managing allocation. So the vector allocates more mem memory than necessary and does, um, does not need to allocate memory for each element. So let's look about this example. So we, ha we have a vector with three elements only, but the capacity of this vector is seven, which means the vector already allocate um, seven elements. So once you want to push a new element, it, it does not need to allocate a new element. That's also an advantage the vector has, the list has not, because the list has to allocate a uh, new memory for each uh, element he is pushing. Um, OK, so you can think about, so the list has to allocate memory each time a new element is inserted. So you can think on a list in this way. So all there is uh, the begin iterator and the end iterator, and all elements like store one after the other. But it's not the case. Actually, all nodes can be in completely different area inside the memory. Uh, one second. OK, second experiments we did is linear search. So in this linear search, we um, measure different number of elements like um, different data structure with the size of number of elements and we t just simply try to linear search a random element and, you, and again once again the least performance of the worst the vector is the clear winner in this case and the deck is not far away from the vector um, right okay so if we are going back to the complexity table, we expect the vector list and deck performance to be pretty much the same, but 
it's not what we receive in uh, the real result. Okay. Um, so random insert. So random insert is um, first of all traversal, find a random element. Actually, we start with a conta container with this number of elements, different number of elements, and then we try simply try to remove 1,000 elements in random uh, um, positions. And once again, so it's first of all we are doing traversal and then simply remove. Once again, the least performance are the worst also in this case. So the traversal, traversal as I said before, is being done in big O notation of N in all data structures. But insert and remove um, is a big O notation of N in vector N deck, but in list is simply changing the, um, the pointers, right? So it should be faster. But in fact, the, the results like um, it didn't compensate on the very slow linear search. Um, random remove is actually the same, so uh, similar to random insert. So the question being asked is, should we avoid using linked list? So um, this is a the std list. So std vector is much more faster than the std list to find an element, right? Because it has to iterate over elements. So we said before that traversal over a vector is much more efficient. Also, the std vector is faster to push elements, uh, uh, push new elements, right, at the back than std list. An std list is very slow to iterate through the collection, as I said before. So in order to answer this question, uh, let's see what is going to happen when we increase the element size from one byte. Do you remember? It was one element in all graph. So now we increase it from one byte to four kilobytes. So this, in fact, the result we receive. So as you can see, in this case, the, the list is the winner, right? And the vector is the slowest one. So what makes the list the winner in this case? And why is the deck twice faster uh, than the, the vector, right? Like, as, as can be seen from the graph. Uh, sorry, there, is, there was a question. Okay, let's continue. Let's continue. Okay. So first question, what makes the list the winner? So let's look about sorting example in order to answer this question. So now we, we are sorting list and sorting vector. And let's see what's going to happen. So both met methods have the asymptotic uh, computational complexity of big O of n log n. And in this benchmark, we com compare the runtime for sorting elements of from the one side uh, four bytes and the n also struct of 804 bytes, which called bloated int. So this is the struct bloated int and those are the results we received. So we can, we can see that uh, when the size of the element is small, then a vector is the winner, right? The, uh, the size is small, it's uh, the blue, light blue over here and the blue, right? But if we are to uh, looking at the bloated int, then then the list is the winner, right? It's the green against the light green. So why does it happen? So let's look about each data structure advantage. 
So vector advantage is, as said before, spatial locality. When element size increase, fewer elements can be stored in a single cache line. In this case, this advantage becomes less relevant. And the least advantage is that sorting involves many swap methods, right? You have to swap two elements. And in order to, to swap in vector, for example, you have to, to use three copies. Why three copies? Like, if you have element here, element here, you first have to copy one element to here, then copy this element to here, and copy back this element. So it involves two, three copies. And in list is much more simpler. It's just uh, uh, changing the pointers. So um, in the list, only pointers to the elements are changed. Um, oh, sorry. OK. OK. So in order to answer this question, should we avoid linked list? So, so short answer, no. It depends on the size of the data, ty data type. And when the element size is large, consider using a list. Spatial locality is not an advantage anymore because, as I said before, the number of elements in a single cache line is smaller now. So this is the list. As uh, we said before, each one of the nodes can be stored in completely a different area of the memory. So uh, it's hard to see the, the numbers, but you can see that the numbers are really different from each other. Uh, by the way, to avoid this, when the data size is big, you can always use a pointer instead, uh, instead of saving the all uh, elements. Uh, and it can be uh, faster in some cases. Okay, second question, why is the deck twice faster than vector? So do you remember this was uh, the, the, the scenario we talked about? So we can see that pretty much, more or less, the deck is twice faster than the, the vector. I, I didn't mathematically prove it, but we can see it in graph. Um, so we are going to, to try to answer this question. So let's try to add an, ele an element to a vector at a certain, uh, at a random position, let's say the first position. And also the first position, the push front, it's the worst case scenario for uh, the vector. So now we're trying to insert this yellow new element inside the front of the vector in order to do so because the vector stores in, uh, its elements contiguous in memory and it stores in a, a certain address. So all elements should shift by one uh, to the right. And now we can uh, insert uh, this element. And let's talk about the deck. When inserting a new element to the deck, other elements can be moved to the end or to the beginning, and the closer point will be chosen. Let's uh, see an example. So this is uh, the deck data structure. So think of a, of a deck as a dynamic array of fixed size blocks and each block is a chunk uh, of memory that can store multiple elements. The block is linked together to form a sequence. So we can see the chunks and the blocks, right? So th also the, uh, the deck has two iter iterators, one uh, pointing to the first element which is the begin iterator, and end iterator, which pointed to the last element. Uh, now we are trying to insert a new data in a random position. 
So there is a optimization uh, we can do here in the deck case. So we are trying to insert a new data. So we can shift all the previous elements one, one, uh, one step toward the beginning of the vector. And now we can insert the new data. So we don't, so the worst case for the deck will be actually insert a new element in the middle of some chunk, but uh, as you can see, the push front scenario is not that worse for a uh, for deck. Okay, so by the way, if we are talking about increasing element size, do you remember this example? So now we are going to increase the element type size and check what is going to happen. Also, we will discuss why using reserve performs better in this example. So now we are trying to increase um, the element size type um, from one byte to four byte. And let's see the graph. So one second. So still the list like is the worst case uh, is the slowest in this example as well. But the vector in this case, the vector performance in this case is worse than the previous uh, vector with only one byte. So why? Because more memory allocation are needed and more memory is being allocated. Um, so uh, we are trying to answer also this question. Why are those steep slopes received? You can see the, the steep slopes over here. Um, so we're trying to we will answer this question also. And why using the reserve is more efficient than not using a reserve, right? Because in the vector reserve case, we can see that the performance is pretty much the same as the previous, previous uh, graph, right? Uh, okay. So as said before, the vector has size and has a capacity. Size is the number of elements, and capacity is the size the vector already allocated. So let's take an example. Uh, now we are pushing one element and then pushing another element. And finally, the vector is full of elements. And now we are trying to push another element. So in the case that the size equals to the capacity. So now, once we want to insert a new element, we have to copy all the previous vector to, it can be to a completely different uh, area in the memory. And then we can push the new element just right after. So we have to use copy. And when the size of the element type is big, copy is more expensive, right? So copying vector of one byte is faster than copying vector of uh, four bytes. Um, yes. Um, mm -mm. OK. So let's try to use vector reserve. So uh, we can see that how the vector looks without reserve. But once we use reserve, like you can see that the vector already allocated more memory than what is necessary because it uses a uh, reserve and this uh, prevent us uh, from us um, uh, allocation in uh, uh, the continue. Um, so, um, mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, one thing is uh, important to mention here is that using reserve is always much more uh, efficient, but it's hard to measure like 
um, it, it's hard to measure sometimes what is going to be the size of the vector. And you don't always want to allocate more memory than what is necessary. So once you use reserve, use it carefully. So should we avoid linked lists? Let's look about the push front example. So uh, why is, uh, is that the worst case for vector? We already answered this question, right? It's because you have to copy each one of the elements and shift them right. Uh, by the way, there is no need to change the data type in this case. It will only make the vector much more slower. Right, so this is the answer. We have to uh, shift all elements by one position. And for list or deck, it does not m make a difference compared to pushing uh, to the back. And also, the, we, there is a support from the uh, theoretical approach because uh, from the theoretical approach also, push front in vector is much more slower than the other data structures. So let's try to summarize. Deck versus vector versus list. What to choose? So when should we choose the deck, for example? So when we want to either add or delete from uh, both ends, uh, use a, uh, for example, implementing uh, a queue, it's better to use deck. And when should we, ch we choose the vector? When, when we are trying to implement something that looks like a stack and insert or delete is only from one side of the uh, data structure. And when should we choose the list? So the list is useful in a few corner cases. For example, the list is, a, is the way to go for huge data set. But ag once again, it's only in a few corner cases. Uh, I, it's a guidelines, but I recommend not using it only if you have good reason why to. Uh, so basically, that's all. Now, Igor is going to take uh, uh, the leadership. Thank you all for listening. Uh, very appreciated. And let's uh, keep the, qu the question. Uh, at the end of uh, Igor, and uh, you can ask both of us together. Okay. So, hi, as you have heard, my name is Igor. I'm going to talk, uh, almost talking about trivial types mostly in containers. I will go, I will talk mostly about non-trivial types. Trivial types are types that, uh, can you hear me? No? Yes, no? Okay, sorry. You <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so I'm going to talk about non-trivial types. Trivial types are types are types that uh, all all its data is in inline. To copy the data is to copy data to copy trivial type object. We need to copy size t of this object. All, all data is needed needed to be copied, but in uh, non-trivial types, they're a little bit more complex. For example, for example, uh, for example, strings or vectors, they they do not contain all this data as part of its class. They just have several pointers that point to actual data and uh, one size of the data and begin and end. The, the, so the size of vector is all, all, only three integers, not the size of actual data and dynamic data. Um, so that, that uh, structure affects performance in uh, containers. So let's see an example of copying of vector. So this is operation that we want to, to do now. And what we need to do is to call copy constructor on each element and till, till, till then, till the all, all objects are uh, copied there. On, on the other hand, uh, 
since C plus plus eleven, we have move semantics. Move semantics doesn't doesn't care about actual data. What what it does? It affects uh, pointers, the begin and end pointers only. We'll, let's see some examples. Hopefully, okay. So this is an example of move, move semantics. If we want to move from source vector to destination vector, and this is data that we have, and this is empty capacities. So the only thing that we need to do is just to move, just to copy uh, pointers from one vector to another. And after this operation, the source vector is access to data of source vector is undefined. So the object itself is defined. You, you can assign the other, you can assign to it, but you cannot use data that it was pointing to because of this behavior, because pointers are now pointed to something else. So how does it affect the uh, uh, container behavior? So I used to use the same containers that you're familiar with, a vector is deck. We uh, use oper operator pushback, and we try to use two, three different types of uh, non-trivial types object. This is mostly, these are uh, wrappers of string type object with the move operators uh, deleted, not, mm, not implement, the implemented with no accept and without no accept. So let's see how that affects performance. Uh, we are familiar with this graph already. <laughs> so we try to, this is the Y timeline, is time it takes to, to perform this number of operations to insert with the two vector. And this is for non-trivial string, non-movable objects. This is the one that move, move operator is deleted. And this one is for oper move operator is implemented. As you can see, it's almost twice as fast as uh, without move operators. But we were expecting much more because str string that we used is was very large. It was uh, significant. Uh, it was large enough to avoid uh, a small string optimization. So we were expect expecting that we need to move. We would save much more move uh, copy of data operation. So it should, should I was at, at least I was expecting much better performance. So what's what's the issue here? Why why performance is not as good as we were expected? Because only twice as fast. So okay. so uh, we can look into C++ standard and what C++ in uh, container requirements in general. It's a topic in the uh, C++ standard. So what it says is that. Methods, push back, push front, and place, erase, clear, pop, pop back. Uh, and they cannot throw exception in general, in, in general. So what that means is that if, if operation if operation failed, it, object should be still valid. But what happens if move operation fails? As we saw in the previous slides, if move operation, after move operation, the original object is not undefined. We cannot use its data. But if we, there was exception during this operation, we can have several objects that are undefined. It's, uh, the, because we didn't finish up our operation because of exception, but, and we already ruined the original vector. So for, for this purpose, there was a, Addition in long time ago in C11, not code not set, that tells that this specific method doesn't throw. So that means that com uh, STD com SQL com containers can use move operator freely because they know that no exception will be thrown, so they can rely on, it, on this logic. And the results for same object with the same size, but the only difference is that we added no except for move operators. Move copy constructor and move, move constructor. As you can see, the difference is pretty significant. Uh, the line is the vector and list, they behave like similar to small trivial types of object. Because that's the only data that needs to be copied in this case. Only three pointers. 
that's just the for comparison. This is like three times faster, and the behavior is erratic because it needs to sometimes it needs to reallocate, and it cannot use smooth semantic content, and it needs to copy and follow. So it's much heavier operation. Okay, so that was. Uh, Shall talk about uh, containers and move semantics. Now I'm going to talk about uh, uh, compile time operations. The, the, the fastest way to do something is not to do it at all. So if we can do it once we're doing compilation, and not to you and not to use this and not to calculate the same thing again during runtime, we will save. We can save potentially a lot of time. Just returning the result is much faster than calculating the result. So let's see what C++ provides us to force compiler to do com calculation at uh, compile time instead of run time. So let's see some small example why compilation is oh, the calculation calculated during uh, com com compilation is much better than. Uh, during runtime, for example, small example. This is just some random code, string size to return. This compiles to this uh, assembly, but very small change with which we use string view. This compiles to just return the result, and that's it. So as you can see, it's uh, much. It should should be much faster because we need to do. Much, less, much significantly less operation. The same is correct even in more complex code. For example, here we just have some struct with three strings. Then we allocate vector of this type string aggregation. And then we try to summarize. We, we take uh, element, second element. It doesn't matter what, the code, what this code does, but just, just in general, it's some more complex code. That's the point. So that compiles to something very long. Even on this, uh, even on this screen, I, we cannot see what, what exactly is happening there. A lot of code. So with the very small changes to this code, we can see the result, just the result. All this, it's, it's even hard to see what the exactly difference, differences are, but we can see that compilation, the uh, compiled to result is much significantly better. So let's see closer to see what exactly, what we changed exactly. So as you can see, original code was using strings. Now we use string view. I will talk a little bit about string view and why they're better than strings in many cases. Uh, instead of uh, vector, we use array, and we wrap this code into anonymous namespace. And uh, use const for on this method, and that's basically it. So very small changes, nothing significant was changed. So uh, this is the, just points the things that were changed. So let's talk about very shortly, briefly, I assume most of you were already familiar with all this. So, const expression is a specifying C++. It's, uh, it, it declares that methods or, const or variables can be computed during compilation compile time. It's, it doesn't force compiler to do compilation during compile time, but uh, it's something like inline. It's a hint to compiler to do compilation if it can. It will try harder the, if we don't and if we don't try, if we don't use const expression. String view is the view on the, any string like object. It the <coughs> the point is that it's very simple class. It just has some pointers to beginning of string, and all its methods are just simple arithmetic operation. And compiler can see this operation and calculate most of them during comp compile time. And all its methods are con declared as const expert, even in C17. In C12, many methods in string are uh, declared as context as well. But still, the point is that string view is much simpler class and much smaller. So 
it's, it's easier to for compiler to optimize. Array is a similar addition, uh, similar advantage to over a vector of a string view. It's just a pointer. It's a simple, very simple wrapper over zero array type. So it doesn't allocate or deallocate. It's uh, when we declare it, it's on the stack with the classes that uh, it has. So compiler, it's much easier for compiler to optimize it as well. And anonymous namespace, it provides us with, a, it tells compiler that this code will be, can be used only in this uh, compilation unit and, and not be used elsewhere because you cannot name this this method or whatever was declared there. So uh, this provide, uh, gives compiler more information of what can be inlined. And when everything is inlined, the compiler can see that the, it can perform many, many calculation already because all information is there. Without namespace, it will consider that this code can be used in other places and it will, cannot be inlined because we can call this method somewhere else that compiler currently is not aware of. Uh, so C++ 20 provides us with some utilities that can help us with the const expression programming or whatever of uh, doing job during doing our work during compilation. So most of algorithms in C++ 20 are const experts, so they can run const for context. Uh, constructors of classes like vector, string, and many others are con const experts as well. There is if const expert construct, we will talk about a little bit later, uh, is constant is evaluated, and constable specify that was added in the C++ plane. There is nothing like special to expand on first two bullets. Just that uh, the, the comp comp algorithms that you're familiar with uh, have, can be run in context per context. So uh, let's see what if context will provide us with. So in this code, we can see that during compilation, for example, if we call this method foo with integer, it uh, compiler see that if our type is integral, integral, and in this case. Who it who is integral, it's an integral type, it will compile only this code in do something to integral type. All other code will not be compiled at all. And it not it will not be part of final binary. And we can this this for, gives us a ability to specify our method during compilation for a specific type. We don't need to check overload of the types if we don't use it. If we don't have floating types, for example, with our code, it will not be part of binary. And, then, and this is an else will be generic type. If we don't have any optimization for integral type floating point, we can call some, something generic that works with other, all other types. Uh, is constant evaluated? Uh, provides us with the ability to know if we're currently in context for context or not. For example, this, for, this is an example of the power function. It calculates uh, b in the power of x. So if we if we in context first evaluated context, we can use this algorithm that can be calculated during compile time if we know our values. And if we are not in context as for context, we will we can call generic function power that will calculate everything for all types. Since this can be since we are in context for constant context and we can calculate it, so the final result will just contain output of this function, just the result. And we all the variables that were used will be removed. Uh, the constant eval specifier uh, provides us with uh, similar to const expert specifier, but it forces it forces the method to be called during compilation. If we if we cannot call it during compilation, compilation compilation will fail. Unlike uh, const expert. 
So, for example, in this case, we can see that uh, multi multiplication of constival on con uh, so we can see that this works on if we select concatenation will fail and we will then call multi constival on A because A is not constant in this context here. If we call if we say like, for example const in A, this the code the error will compile as well. But uh, multi const expression compiles even if we don't call A as constant. Because it's only const expression and it's only suggestion to compile it doesn't need to be contextual. So, so summary uh, you if if you of course if you use and you and you know, you know that your methods cannot throw exception, use no accept. It will help all algorithms and containers uh, in your defining this to be to work more efficiently, use views objects that do not that are simple and do not uh, modify original objects. It does simpler to optimize for compiler. Context for use context for the one. <laughs> this was for the one. And we talked about this context for as well. Uh, just to summarize and. Uh, See, probably, yeah. Uh, any questions, comments? Uh, if you now accept the function and pass it to what would be Cr the result? It term std terminate will be called, so it can crash. But oh. So you need to be certain that your function doesn't throw, actually, because the, it's better to to have slower performance, but not crash, crash the, usually, in most cases. Uh, anyone? Um, might be a silly question, but if you have a data structure which is trivial to a degree that you use some default implementation of copy and move or even delete code. In, in trivial, then there is no move, there is no point in moving. No, the, the copy and move itself, you have a data structure? Ah, okay. Of course, you will accept it implicitly there anyway, but uh, it doesn't really matter. Because. It, the, no, no accept is not, is not implicit anywhere. So you need to write it. Because the compiler doesn't know if your code throws exceptions, and then you cannot introduce crashes. So when implicitly generated, it's not no accept? No. Yes, yes, that yes, correct. yes, that's correct. Implicitly generated uh, constructors, destructors, etc., are not no accept. If you want it to be no accept, you have to define it yourself. And if you define it the default keyword, still, still it's the same as default. They're not no accept. You have to define it. No accept is just say empty. It still has to use no accept. Compiler can, uh, doesn't know it. It, it, it doesn't understand actually your code, what your part is. <laughs> what are going to be. So it's fine. That's it. Thank you.